we're very blessed in that regard that uh, we can offer you know that small piece of education that I pride myself on uh, just online so anybody can go there free of charge and pull up you know even if they have an existing tool that they they're wondering what it's it is and it's not even from Western hey go on to our site and check out those videos and, and right. this is again it's you, you brought up really about being efficient and um, um, you know knowing how to do something properly and and that's that's what we're about and, Welcome to another episode of Optometry Profits Revealed. I'm your host, Peter Precht, and today we are with Joe Sable. Joe's an 18-year veteran of the eye care industry. He's a business development executive across his entire career for the most part. And uh, we'll talk briefly about this. It was five years as uh, the Verilux rep in Wisconsin. There was a five-year uh, time where we worked together with Wallman. He was the head of instruments. Six years you had spent with Lombard, and uh, we want to talk about that. Um, there's a few different roles in Lombard that you had played, and I'm curious about those roles. And then in 23, you've been consulting, and now in 24, you and your wife purchased Western Optical Supply. So without any further ado, welcome, Joe. Thanks, Peter, so much. Appreciate it. I, I am super looking forward to this. I appreciate everything you've been doing for the industry, especially to help independents. Uh, you and I, I think we have very similar philosophies in uh, what we can do to help uh, help the independents grow their businesses and, and really differentiate themselves. So I really appreciate this opportunity. And we met at, at Wallman and mm -hmm. it had to be I mean, I don't have it much to compare it to, but the training was absolutely outstanding. Um, the training, the feedback, uh, the engagement, the inter engagement amongst uh, different communities, you know, uh, how people from instruments would interact with the image wear and safety. And then it was, we would, it, we would seek best practices together and it was encouraged through the training. So I think that, that, that's something really wonderful that we were able to take with us down the road into what we naturally did. You had said when we were talking a moment ago that some of the most fun you had was being the Verilux rep in Wisconsin. Give me a, a, a lesson or two that, that came out of that. And then if you have a gem of a story that you can think of, you don't have to go down that road. Yeah, no, I do have one actually. I got to share, but no, I loved it just because uh, I have always had kind of a heart for the, the optician side of it. I, and and that's me. For, for the most part, you know, that's where I was calling on um, teaching and educating and, and just helping them um, improve capture rates and uh, what, how to right. sell premium products and so forth. And, and I just really, really enjoyed it. Um, and so getting back to now, it's come, coming full circle, uh, almost you know, over a decade later into the, with Western, I know we'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. uh, it just, it fit so well for me and what my, really my passion in the eye care um, space is. And that's really on the optician side and, and helping them um, advance their careers and, and grow their uh, businesses as well. Uh, but yeah, good story. Uh, one of my favorites, I, I tell this quite often, is um, I my first, you know, I, I started at Essilor, I was uh, new to eye care. So I get, go through my training and all that, you know, and I get out and I look at my top accounts um, and I go to the top one right off the bat. And uh, I walk in the door and I meet with the main manager and she's, she looks at my business card and she says, you're not ABO certified. I said, uh, no, as a matter of fact, I'm brand new to eye care. And she says, well, she gives me her, my card back and says, well, don't come back until you're ABO certified. Wow. Okay. Um, so and you're I, there to talk instruments. <laughs> no, I was there to talk Verilux. Oh, that's uh, that, right. That was why I was at Verilux. Yeah. So. I, uh, well, that's a, that's a, know, that's a rough one. It was, a, it was a rough first call for him, <laughs> but I put my tail between my legs, kind of mm -hmm. muffled out, you know, walked out. But so I'm like, but I got to my car. I'm like, you know what? She's right. I need to provide, uh, be able to add value to her employees and right. my customers. And right. I can't do that right now. So I, what I do, I went out and got it right away. I had it within, uh, three or four months after that. I took a course, um, sponsored through Cherry Optical, uh, here in Green Bay. And awesome. yeah, it was, uh, such a great learning experience. And sure enough, whatever the three, four months later, I come back to that account, show her my card, ABL certified, ABLC on that back of it. And she says, 
wow, uh, I didn't actually think you were going to do that. I'm like, <laughs> but you, you know, I, she she was right though. You know, I need to be at a certain level of oh, yeah. credibility and to be able to offer and um, educate and uh, provide value to our customer base. And and so that was one of my favorite moments. And, and from that point forward, I got my speaker certification. I actually developed a course. Uh, when I was uh, at Walman Instruments side um, uh, for right. electronic refraction and got it uh, CE approved and so forth. And I just love teaching uh, and giving back. That's what it really comes down to. Yeah, both Walman and Cherry, I think, are really wonderful with opening up those uh, chaining, uh, training avenues that flow beautifully into the independent practices that are out there because they – really the training should be coming through those venues. You know, that's their lab. That's who they're going to support. And that's what they want to do. It makes sense for the training to be connected with that. And, and the fact that they, they definitely go to the Met to provide it, uh, both of those entities, even to this day, you know, we know that they are very, very strong in the education world and reaching out and to opticians for that matter too. Um, you know, there's a connection there. And on that note, too, I uh, since with Western now, we're going to host a ABL course this coming fall, partnering with Kathy Barrow, a very, very close friend of mine, awesome. uh, frame rep, uh, mm -hmm. teaches ABL classes. She's yeah. the one who taught me, and she's she's just awesome. And so we're going to host that complimentary to uh, anybody in the uh, northeast Wisconsin area who needs some certification. I'm going to look at uh, even putting it out uh, somewhat, uh, somehow online at the same time as well. Right. Now, I want to talk briefly about Lombard, and um, you had a series of roles that are there, but at the end, you you got to kind of oversee everything, and um, you know, I want to talk about that, but I want to talk about the the sequence of roles that took place there, and you know, you and I will kind of dance around the private equity worm, but it's a you know, Doctor Equity is running a lot of things, and they don't know a lot of things, and. You know, I don't really, have, I don't really have an answer to that, but, um, but it is something that we're dealing with. I mean, obviously our focus is not there, um, because at, at any given point in time, any business arrangement you or I may have with them would just be, you know, burned up and they would just do it themselves. And, you know, so there's that element of it, but they do have some strong movement and they do have strong training and they're very, very excellent for, for an uh, optometrist that wants to just polish their craft as an OD. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying there isn't a place for this, but when it comes to our focus and our goals and our targets, how do they fit into this mix? And, um, you know, you described that change taking place when you, you Lombard had been family owned forever. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Lombard brothers owned it for, whew, I can't, I don't even remember off the top of my head. 40 years. I think it was something like that. Yeah. yeah. Or even longer. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I used to work with Dr. Mitchell Corey and his cousins, I think, started it or something like that. They're okay. Down in, started down in Tidewater, I believe. And, or, or maybe not. I don't know if Lombard actually began there. I know that's where he was. But yeah, deep, rich connections and right through wholesale. You know, there were some very large wholesale operations that were down in that region. And Wallman actually had a pretty large lab in the time on her region uh, before our time, but it was not open when I was there. And, and, and again, that's, that's part of it. You know, we know we're going to experience consolidation. We know we're going to live through these things, but staying committed to a certain code of ethics or a certain target is, is, is something to, to tip your hat to, which leads me to Western, you know, with, that was a, a, uh, quite a move you guys have only having been owning for a year um they could have sold to equity yeah chose not to um describe that yeah thanks that's a great question and uh so joshua freilich and his wife suzanne owned uh of western since 1973 they started it and uh, just a tremendous he has given so much to the industry for so long mm -hmm. um that you know he looked at it as yeah i could you know could get a little bit uh, you know get a bag of money and off i go and off to the sunset but he he really looked at it as i want to leave a legacy i want to keep my legacy going that i built for almost a you know half over a half century 
And that's how we got kind of connected. And philosophies are very, very similar. Um, he just loves teaching. He loves engaging, loves um, uh, training and um, giving back and uh, built a really nice, nice business here um, through that philosophy. And that's honestly, that's, that's very similar to me. I've got a lot more to learn <laughs> than well, uh, that. You mentioned the constant seeking of engagement. And, you know, while it's old school, it has some really amazing new implications in today's world with social media, um, the fun marketing that can take place that we see. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, it's very energetic. And the way to take those exchanges and craft them your own way as you're moving forward with social media is kind of cool. And you can put the Sable stamp on it, but everyone will know that it's Western. That's right. And this is a this is where it gets fun to me, you know, um, because you can really cultivate those those, you know, agreements into you know into an understanding of who you are, what your goals are, how you want to grow with them, what products you want to be able to bring to them. Yeah, I mean that's a that's yeah. A we want thing. we want we want feedback. You know, we want if if our tools are are not. You know, we, we pride ourselves on making our t opticians jobs easier. And if right. there's something that's not doing that, we want to know about it. And so positive, negative, you know, please let us know. And we'll, we'll go and uh, redesign something if it needs to be. And it's been done. And I work with Joshua still to this day. He's such a wealth of information. And we're constantly Definitely. talking about tweaking things and where we could uh, change some things up. And he's got a great designer mi mindset. And um, he um, he's still, you know, just actively engaged, even though he's uh, retired. I, I won't let him stop answering. He won't let, I can't let him stop answering my phone calls. So um, <laughs> right. I have, I have so much to learn <laughs> yet to this day, but uh, um, you know, happy when you call. <laughs> I, <laughs> I hope so. Uh, on today, you know? I can see him probably twinging, but uh, right. no, I, you know, it comes down to really um, wanting <laughs> to do better for the eye care industry and, and uh, make things better for everyone. And well, we and, love doing it. So. Well, and, and no question, you know, a, a target for both of our, our businesses is, are the opticians associations and, you know, resonating in, in that market. Um, um, but it, it, there are ways of expanding and, you know, thinking out in different ways, you know, go, going in different directions to connect in some of these dots. We've been talking on the last several podcasts briefly in and out about the shifts that we've made internally because of the feedback we were getting and the most obvious feedback that we were getting, uh, was truthfully to, uh, you know, it kind of <laughs> knock on the safety door <laughs> for lack of better terms. And, and we were just mentioning, you know, we were having our pre-dialogue before we began recording. This is, a huge opportunity because there's prescription safety eyewear programs w within miles of almost everyone. Um, you know, and some of them are just reimbursement programs and you're not going to get, make some headway there, but knocking on doors and building your own connections, you're no threat to where you're working for remote frame styling at 5 AM. That's right. And here you are building yourself an online presence and familiarity, people that know you for your skill set. Yeah. And what better way to develop a skill set than protecting someone's eyes at work and building that relationship in that way? Um, but they, again, uh, it's hard for opticians. Opticians really are facing, I, I just did a post today on LinkedIn where they're facing a fork in the road where they have to make these choices that are just not fun. And it, it seems like an easy answer to lobby for more money or to organize. And I do think that we need more st state associations and Everyone, no one's not heard me say that, you know, these state associations are wonderful, but some of them are missing a target, including us, where we got to cast a net a little bit wider so that we can let people know in, you know, we're probably not going to get, maybe, maybe yes or no with equity because they were private anyway. But for the chain environments, these are, they've got skilled seasoned people in them that don't even know about products that exist. You know, think of the products you sold in your entire career. And if there's somebody who's been working the same 18 years inside of LensCrafters, what do they know? There's nothing wrong with them. 
no. they don't know. They don't know right. what they don't. They don't know what they don't know. You're right. And I, I think those are really cool markets for us to kind of tap into, um, because let's face it, there's there is opportunity for you to start something on your own online, and you need supply. <laughs> you yeah. need goods all the time, yeah, constantly. So. Talk about online um, ordering and how you see that going forward. And then I, I do want to talk, I do want to talk a little bit more about that changing from that sales role to an executive role. Sure. Sure. So yeah, online, uh, you know, it's obviously it's just, you know, it's, it can't, the, the, it comes down to, you know, especially since COVID what's how, how easy is it to get a certain product? You know, that's what it comes down to. And uh, we've, we've done a nice job, I think with our website and the platform that's running it to make um, our uh, customers, our opticians, the lives easy to just go on our site and uh, pick out what they need. We have great educational tools right on there. YouTube videos that will show them. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. It is great stuff. Joshua uh, made some just tremendous uh, videos. And so it's, um, we're very blessed in that regard that uh, we can offer, you know, that small piece of education that I pride myself on uh, just online. So anybody can go there free of charge and pull up, you know, even if they have an existing tool that they, they're wondering what it's, it is. And it's not even from Western Hey, go on to our site and check out those videos. And, right. and this is, again, mm-hmm. it's, you, you brought up really about being efficient and, um, um, you know, knowing how to do something properly. And, and that's, that's what we're about. And so um, we, we, tr- our, our website makes it really easy to get training, um, good tidbits of training, uh, but also the ordering process is, is super easy. You can just go on there couple of buttons, uh, online shop and, and get, get, uh, um, get your products. Uh, we, we turn around very, very quickly as well. It's definitely been an awesome dialogue. I really do like what we're talking about and I think it's going to resonate in with the people that, you know, understand the plight of, of, you know, as, as we record this right now, people do understand the plight of independence and it is a hard road right now to navigate because you're, in tight with insurance and you're losing some freedoms, but where you can keep freedoms is, I think is completely huge. Um, and it gives people like us the opportunity to introduce new tools and products that aren't going to be easy to be introduced. Um, and even like we were talking about ways of setting up and doing online business isn't easy. Um, these are things to tackle across the board. Um, we had talked, about how Walman, this this powerhouse, you know, they're not you know immune to things going wrong, and 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 they, this this is challenging, you know. So, you know, we I lived through some experiences where things were shaken to the core uh, at that company level, and for you to come in and take over a family owned situation, it's got to be relaxing. It allows you to focus on using the tools that the sales tools that you have used before and move them forward. So talk about your sales role and then being an executive. Sure. That's very different. When you moved from being out of the field as a Verilux rep into, you know, an executive type role, uh, tell me, tell me about that in your mind and then tell me about it on the ground because you were able to implement some training things that you just mentioned briefly, which you can talk a little bit more about. Sure. Sure. Yeah. It's uh, it was a big shift. No doubt. Uh, you hear a lot of stories of uh, moving sales guys into a managerial or executive type role and it not necessarily working out so well. I've been very fortunate and blessed that it, it has, uh, for the most part, uh, not without uh, plenty of mistakes. But I've always enjoyed um, mentoring and coaching. I, you know, I've been involved in sports my whole life and coached in basketball in high school and so forth. And so um, I love seeing other people succeed based off of the teachings and the, right. the help and the behind the scenes that I give them. And that really drives me. That drives me. I mean, I love closing. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm right. you know, a salesperson at heart, but when I see somebody else do it now, um, that even gets me more jazz. No, I, I completely agree with you. Yeah, so. That 
that was the crux of a social media post that that, that I just did because it, it it's it's a different feeling. Yeah. I mean, obviously you're excited for your own success, but you know when you have that parent type or coach type uh, yes. feeling, you know, and when it is coach more more it's coach related, you know, then the connection's seamless and back and forth. I mean, you you can see that you delivered, <laughs> and vice versa, <laughs> yes. and that's really cool. You know, the, when you're coaching, you have to coach t- to the individual, you know, and, and I know you understand that, but you've also got a goal that is bigger than them. That's it. Exactly. And, you know, getting that process to go through each head is what coaching is about. It's to me. Yeah. And, and you, you got to get by it. Uh, so to me, I think a lot of it for how I think I've been successful is I've been very transparent with all my teams, uh, right. not hide information, not, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that they're going to get what they want per se, but I'm going to take their feedback. And, um, if it's, if it's going to work great, if not, you know, um, or I can't implement it, then uh, so be it. But it's, uh, you, you know, you have to be transparent. That's the key. I think. Right. Um, that just being transparent with communication is is uh, going to be make you successful um, or or not if you're not so it, 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 not only from the top down but uh, you know across team members it makes it so yes. much easier when you're able to you know in in a case like we do is share best practices yes. but it can be so much deeper than that you know when you're talking about a team at a, at a sports level you know now there's an interchange that's at a new level. You know, you want people thinking five steps ahead so that balls are going to empty spaces, but there's people there. And that's what it's about. You know, it, it's about knowing full well that this is going to happen, even though it's not formulating in front of you right at the moment. So that kind of gets back to that closing of a sale on your own versus guiding and watching someone else move through that process themselves. Because it is, it is a learning experience. Um, you know, we've, we've spent times, I know you, you and I both have spent times with some of the fan, most fantastic salespeople, but they couldn't close to save their life. And it's like, I don't know what you're uncomfortable about asking to close when you've just presented your expertise, but there are people that are uncomfortable with the business part of it. So that doesn't have to go away. That's the most beautiful thing about the tools that are available to us in an online capacity now is that that aspect that wasn't serving you as a rep can serve you as an optician in this way or whichever way, you know, like we talked about going out and and doing safety work or going out and plugging it in and rehabilitation service, uh, you know, assisted living, any of those environments for mobile opticians is not uncommon. Um, But to plug that in overload in one place or another can be too much. So mix it, do it right. Stay current in your craft, you know, and, and, and I, I think that that's huge, but man, those, that, those videos that are t- teaching, we can't get enough of that. Yeah. We need more I, and we I need to connect it. We need to connect it further with not just digital lens technology or, mm-hmm. you know, what's current now per se, or what's the most current thing in an optometric environment. Now we can take this out into further directions to, you know, examine where eye care is lacking in the system and then connect those with the services and make it easier access for more and more people to do things. Like I believe that we're going to see a lot more optician owned businesses because it can happen. (laughs) Absolutely. It's so untapped right now. I mean, there's so much opportunity. uh, There's so much value, so much Mm -hmm. knowledge that they can bring to the table in so many capacities that you were alluding to just now. Mm -hmm. Um, that they there's so much untapped knowledge that they have that they can bring to the marketplace that can really really carve your specialty um yes my brother was seasoned 37 years with lens crafters his career just ended gotta tip our hat to him for staying there that long um and them having him there that long i mean it's just a unusual circumstance for the most part but you know so here he is out in the world nearly 40 years of eye care you know, so what's he, what does he want to do? What's he going to do, you know, at, at, in a very specific place and time, you know, 
he's his personal life is music. So he plays music, he's violin oriented. He does repair sales of violin. And, you know, next thing you know, he's meeting somebody who works at a guitar manufacturer that, that I sold to. So here we are knocking on their door, getting ready to go in and introduce a new safety eyewear program that they've needed. It's just a win-win for, and, you know, these connections and, and this type of synergy, people that you know, people that you've known from the past, interconnections. Like you said, you talked about untapped. Yeah. I really fully believe there's going to be opticians that have no clue that they would be working for themselves in a year from now, they're going to be working for themselves and yeah. thinking, why didn't I do this 10 years ago? You know, um, that's me. But, <laughs> well, but 10 years ago, wasn't necessarily the best time to do it either. Sure. You know, maybe we needed to experience the COVID shakeup because our industry really got shook to the core with that. And I know I talk about it a lot here, but it's not, we're not here to talk about how to plan, you know, financially for your practice next year. That, that's not it. What we are here to do is talk about what is going to be successful moving forward, how to introduce technologies in the right environments where they work. Um, remote frame styling does not work effectively if your average age is 78. Mm -hmm. And there are practices that have an average age of over 75. Um, but if you're in a certain place or certain environment where you have a similar demographic age, but they're all caregivers, then maybe you do. Yep. So there's an assessment that needs to take place there because the caregivers are going to think differently than the actual individual that's nearly 80 years old. Um, and you have to assess these things and think about them absolutely as an on-site optician, but undeniably as remote, mm -hmm. you know, of course, you'd prefer to be doing remote styling with somebody at a frame board. <laughs> That's not necessarily the way we're going. Exactly. But so, you know, social media, you have this wonderful opportunity here to kind of galvanize your own brand onto that. And um, you do have a brand where you've been focused on education. People know this about you. They know that you put together programs that are specifically to teach and predicated to opticians which is really really cool um do you see this going forward or do you see yourself making some of your own videos that are going to kind of get added to what's yeah. there and 100 percent. we're we're so cool. we have so much uh you know piled up right now we're trying to learn the business and just oh, uh, yeah. Going. yeah but yes it's it's on definitely on the list we want to um yeah we're looking at uh, new uh products uh that we're uh, looking to add uh on some new designs uh of some of our tools some new uh, grips and so forth so oh, I that's cool with my designer this morning uh we're nice and so there's gonna be some really cool things coming down the pike here uh but yeah first and foremost uh, it comes down the education piece is not going away um we're going to be expanding that out in fact this fall i i I believe I may have mentioned earlier, but we'll be hosting an ABO um, uh, class again locally, but I'm going to try to get this uh, online as well. So, um, and that's I'm a big, great, so. I'm a big believer of some rudimentary learning stuff, things like restrings and, you know, extractions and um, the proper tools uh, in those environments and the proper, like you were talking about some handheld tools just a moment ago that, that, you know, Sometimes people tend to just use needle nose for everything, which would be me. But <laughs> if there's, you know, you gotta oh, get you hooked up, Peter. I've, you know, I've drifted <laughs> into nose pliers. I, you know, I'm getting there. You know, I'm not quite, you know, over that hill. But, but there is, there's that element where you you get stuck in these weird niches, and then when you see someone using something that's so much easier, like I, I, I've got to go that route. That's a, there's a, especially if you're in a certain populace or even in an on-site safety fitting where you've got to you know, you're dealing with stuff that's in a rapid capacity. So that's, you know, I mean, everything is, is predicated on what you're doing, I, I guess. But, but that I, I'm a big believer in doing the, some of those demos and showing those things uh, in an open way. I don't think you're going to get any credit for that kind of stuff, but it's practical and it's training and people would love it and they would love to be a part of it. I mean, I, I can do solder work, you know, and I've done solder repairs and stuff like that. And every once in a while, somebody witnesses it and they're like, oh, wow, that's so cool. I mean, look at that. You know? And I mean, that's certainly how I felt when I was watching it and learning it and going through it. I don't do much of it now, but I think that that would be fun to bring back some of these types of things 
in in these forums, you know, or, or even have stuff put aside where, you know, people are using hot fingers, you know, because, you know, I mean, who, you know, how many opticians have used hot fingers? You know, probably half. Yeah. I'm going to guess 50%, you know, and I'm, there's another 50% going, I don't know what the heck he's talking about. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. <laughs> but, but, and, so and then also about put, it, put it back then on the, the, the right. customer, the patient experience, then they're coming yeah. in, they have a major problem with a frame or something. And let's just say that that optician, to your point, isn't well versed, doesn't have the right tools or whatever, and has to send that back into the frame manufacturer. You know, by the time they get that back, that person could be left without their uh, most important sense, uh, best vision that possible for a couple right. of weeks or something. It, versus right. if you have the right tools, the right education, uh, which we, again, we can help with and call we'll us. Get you a new one, but this will get you there. This yeah, is what you said. <laughs> we'll get you, get you by and we can fi- get that right. spring hinge fix that, you, exactly. you know, so so forth. So those types of things, that that's what we want. I want to get that information out there um, to the masses really to help people out. I think that's going to be fun. I see a lot of that happening uh, this fall. Um, I know that we, we've we established a little bit of our presence in the eastern half of PA and the western half. Um, we still need to, to work on and we're, we're working on having uh, labs do, um, you know, come have a tour. You know, we'll we'll have some finger foods and, and soda or whatever and, and give a chance for, for them to see their regulars, but then also give the Opticians Association to call on prospective accounts for them. Um, so we want to use this, what we have, but we want to gather more membership and we want it to be the same thing for the local labs so that they can have exposure and understanding of, uh, potentially new accounts that, that haven't really worked with them. Um, cause a lot of the major cities will have one or two labs. And so they're either, you know, working with a, a powerhouse somewhere or, or one of, t- one of the two of them typically. Um, it's not uncommon at all for us to see that. So I, I I think that that's a, that's a nice thing to do. And for groups like yourself to be involved with some of the trainings that, that I was just talking about, I mean, you know, not, not, not everyone wants to see a restring, but you know, (laughs) if you will, if you're the first person that sees a little bit of heat shrinks it just enough, so you don't have to pull it all out and do it again. I mean, that's kind of cool. I mean, at least it was to me, you know, I mean, any little pearl of wisdom that can make life easier for somebody going forward. That's yes. what these gatherings really ought to be about. Absolutely. Um, and so, so that's kind of, and I do think that the new opticians associations coming together are going to be a huge part of this. And as we begin to come with different ways of, um, you know, reaching into uh, the, the, the three, 4,000 opticians in, in each state that are just not a part of these things, whether they don't feel welcome or they don't know, probably don't know. I think most of them don't even know that there really are associations. And certainly if there isn't licensing or required education, that does make it a little bit more challenging to, to grow what you're doing. But we do have an industry of people come and stay. Um, and that, you know, that leads me to, you guys stayed in this and you could have gone out. You could have gone another direction. I'm sure you and your wife explored it. Um, we did. And to think that you know you found the similar philosophy and you're able to bring your book of business and your mindset with it too that's got to be a relief um it allows you to be you um yes and <laughs> that I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for woman to for allowing me to be me in in my sales roles um I, I was not micromanaged ever and i really do appreciate that um in in a massive way i know you built a team in the instruments division that went on to shatter numbers crazy after you left and you know tip of the virtual hat because that i mean seriously that's that may not go recognized but you know i was there and i saw it and uh and it was you know like i said the, the time time frame that we we got to work together we worked with some really amazing people yeah. people that were stepping away from the industry and people that were coming in Yep. Um, so there's room, you know, you talked about that story before where it, you had a rough experience n- not being ABO certified and, you know, she didn't necessarily expect you to do that, but it definitely hit home when you did because she, she knew that that's how much it mattered to that's you. Right. I was a customer um, for life, by the way, you know, of course. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, no doubt. I'm sure you're, you'll work with this person forever. And you should. Um, these, these are experiences that galvanize and change things because they make life reliable for people. Uh, you know, sometimes we take, you know, things for granted in our industry. We don't really take vision for granted because we've known and we've seen the other side of things, but, but there is some real truth to, you know, (laughs) Hey, people come, they stay. There's a lot of glory and a lot of gratitude and helping people see clearly and, to take it two or steps two or three steps further like we've been talking about there's a lot of that feeling when seeing seeing other people succeed if you can be a part of that and look at i mean with all the products you sell and the training that you can deliver and the videos that you you can can, can contribute and make and how you can put your stamp on it that's fun and and that is a way to to understand how profits are and how you can you talked about regular interaction that's the key. You know, I don't want to sell you something you don't want. I want to be known for having that product delivered almost preemptively so that you that, that solved everything for you. And that, I mean, I mean, that's really what, what supply is about. I think, you know, it's not. I couldn't agree more. It, yeah. And, and that, that's cool. I think it's a fun thing. And to get that into the right hands, uh, is absolutely huge. So we know our audience and we know what we're seeking to do. And I think that's, that that's absolutely huge. Is there anything else that you wanted to add before we wrap up? No, Peter, I, I mean, it just sums to sum it up. You, you really uh, highlighted so much. Uh, I think, you know, you and I have very similar philosophies, obviously. And right. uh, I'm, that's, it really comes down to, uh, we're really looking for, my wife and I are really looking for just helping grow the industry as a whole. You know, and, and if we can help one person's right. job go a little smoother on a daily basis, you know, that's, that's a huge win for us. And completely. So, um, we're just super excited, super blessed to have this opportunity, um, to, uh, to, to be a part of uh, the industry that's, uh, really done, uh, my family very well for almost two decades now. And, uh, like now to be on this side, it's, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it, you summed it up. It allows me to be me, and um, yeah. I couldn't be more excited and more happy. And Peter, thank you for this opportunity. Super oh, appreciate it, man. What you're yeah. doing in the industry is is awesome too. You're an inspiration. Thank, thank you so much. And you know, uh, thanks for 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 you know resonating with the what we've been through and and the things that that we were able to see. And you know, we talked before. Uh, this has been a journey. Yes, um, and it's every peak is way better than a valley and that's what we're here to do we're trying to bring people up to the peaks and hopefully we'll stay there and we have a wonderful like you said untapped (laughs) and that's what we're looking at so 2024 and forward is going to be completely unbelievable for opticians and the whole independent sector i think in general Uh, amen so. Well, thank you so much for uh, no, joining us for another episode of Optometry Profits Revealed. I'm your host, Peter Precht. If any of this resonates, please reach out to icclearly.com. We urge you to check out Western Optical Supply right away. Thank you so much, Joe. Take good care, everybody. Thanks, everybody.